Or if I was you while you're in Dublin, pop into Epic Ireland. Epic Ireland Museum is in the very centre of Dublin. And there at Epic Ireland Dublin, they'll help you research your roots. Research your family, the family name. How many, let's just say, Tom McCarthy's would have lived in Ireland in 1857 and would have emigrated that year to North America or anywhere all across the globe. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, let's go see the world. Hey, hello, and thanks for joining the A Midlife Traveler. We are exploring Ireland the voices, stories, and opinions of locals who live there and travelers who've been there. And my name's Laura. And today I have an episode for any one of you out there in the world of the 70 million of us who claim Irish heritage. Because if you listened to the last episode, you would have heard a virtual tour of Epic, the Irish Emigration Museum that is right in the middle of downtown Dublin, Ireland. And it's a really cool museum that I hope you someday have the opportunity to enjoy. But at the end of that museum, there is something that is so unique. I mean, well, there's a gift shop, which is not super unique, but next to the gift shop, there is a place called the Irish Family Heritage Center. And what they do there is they will help you research your Irish heritage. They have experts on hand who know exactly all of the websites to get the census information, the the records, and, and to really make a quick job of researching and discovering your ancestral roots through all of the historical documentation that's available online. And you can go there with an appointment to meet a person, or you can just show up after you get out of the museum and rent computer time. So they have hot links to all of these different places that you can go and research on your own. Or as I was very fortunate to do, I had a person with me, his name was Deccan, and he was amazingly helpful. I gave him small bits of my past. I gave him my father's name, what I knew about my father's birth date and birth location in the United States. I knew um, the name of one of his brothers. I knew the name of his parents. I had information mostly from my father's death certificate, but I had information, core information about my father. But I had not done anything like an Ancestry.com type research on my own. So I gave this information over to Deccan and he was a wizard at that computer. He looked up four or five different record sites and cross-referenced census data with family heritage websites, with lots of records within Ireland, and was able to fairly quickly uncover that the names I had, the people I had that I thought were my grandparents are right there documented on the record. And if they are my grandparents, Basically, he said, congratulations, Laura, you can apply to become a citizen of Ireland because both your grandfather and your grandmother were Irish citizens born in Ireland who emigrated to the United States. Even though your father was not an Irish citizen and he was born in the United States, you still qualify through something called Irish citizenship through birth or descent. And you can get your birth registered as a foreign birth and you can qualify to apply for Irish citizenship and a passport if you can prove the documentation and paper trail of birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates, emigration data, etc. to, you know, provide that data link. So that really was <laughs> huge. I mean, that was huge for me. There was someone basically telling me that this heritage I have not known, that I have been unfamiliar with in my past, was welcoming me back and giving me an opportunity for connection, and that I had the opportunity to apply for citizenship in Ireland, which by extension is citizenship in the European Union, 
and a passport in Ireland and a passport in Europe, which has all sorts of rights and privileges that are allowed to European citizens that are not allowed to American citizens, whether it's talking about uh, working and living abroad or getting a job or buying property, any of those other things, this whole new world opens up to people like me or like you who are out there listening, who maybe you have some Irish heritage in your past and maybe your parents you know, are not Irish citizens, were not from Ireland, but your grandparents were, and they immigrated from Ireland. I mean, it's possible for people like you to look into your past, collect the documentation, and apply for Irish citizenship. I came back after my trip, and I was talking to my friend Donna about this, and you know what? She can trace her family back three generations directly into Ireland. She had no idea this was possible. She's super excited. She's going to apply for citizenship. And I'm going to be so excited the day that she gets it. So I encourage anyone of Irish descent that's out there in the world, whether or not you choose to visit Ireland or you have the opportunity to visit Ireland, you might want to take an opportunity to go online through any of the ancestry type sites and try to trace your roots back. And if you have the opportunity, look up the Irish Family Heritage Center in Dublin. And they were so, so helpful to me. And I'm certain that they'd be helpful to anyone who reached out through their website and asked for support. In addition, I also learned because Northern Ireland, you know, today is part of the UK, but has not always been part and separate from the rest of Ireland. They have a separate records in Northern Ireland in Belfast and I'm just going to give you the recording from um, my tour guide that day Brian who was fantastic who explained what the uh, records department location and, and then in case if that is not enough to inspire you to think that you want to become an Irish citizen we're going to end this podcast with Brian continuing to just give a brief little lesson in Irish Gaelic on just a few keywords that people might want to learn before they come to visit. So that's it. It's a real short episode today. By the way, folks, if there's anybody here of Irish descent, anybody of Irish ancestry, yes. we've got a place very close to here. It's called Pony Public Records of Northern Ireland. So, Public Records of Northern Ireland, that's where you can go and find about your past, especially if they're from this section of Ireland. Why not send them an email, make a phone call, or if I was you while you're in Dublin, pop into Epic Ireland. Epic Ireland Museum is in the very centre of Dublin, not far from Tara Street Station. And there at Epic Ireland Dublin, they'll help you research your roots, research your family, the family name, how many, let's just say, Tom McCarthy's would have lived in Ireland in 1857 and would have emigrated that year to North America or anywhere all across the globe. So there you have it. As soon as you're done listening to this podcast, you should go Google the Irish Family Heritage Center or the Public Records of Northern Ireland or just check out roots.ie or just Google find my Irish ancestry and see what Google delivers. So now here is your little brief Irish Gaelic lesson of the day with Brian. There's many words that would have drifted from Irish into English here in this country. So one of the first words I'll tell you about is crack. Now crack is the Irish word meaning fun or atmosphere. And I don't know about yourselves any, but crack is very good fun here in Republic of Ireland anyway. Maybe it's very good in America, Australia, wherever you're from as well. Um, a common saying that we have is any crack or what's the crack? It's in the morning time when I see John, he says, oh, Brian, Jesus, the state, you, you know. <laughs> And I said, well, Johnny, crack. He says, no, and yourself. We'll have a bit of crack together. And after that, I am flying. So it's just crack just means fun or atmosphere, that's all. But you can ask anybody, a police officer, a man in the army, just say to him, well, any crack. And they'll say, no, and yourself. So don't worry about that. Now, there's only one place to worry about talking about crack, and that's usually the airport. So if you're walking through customs and someone says to you, well, how was your holiday in Ireland? And you turn around and say, oh, Ireland, I loved Ireland. I had loads of crack in that country. Just watch out there. 
the sniffer dogs might be on the way over to you, okay? So keep an eye out for that. Some other words would include fuckle. So if you want to say you have a few words in the Irish language, you say ta cupla fuckle gum. So if you want, I can teach you a cupla fuckle. So who wants to have a cupla fuckle with the tour guide here today? Fuckle, again, is the Irish word, meaning word. Cupla is couple. So cupla fuckle, ta cupla fuckle gael gum. I have a few words of the Irish language. Diagwith is how you say hello. It's may God be with you. How are you? Kunza tatu. Angura makut. Thank you very much. So there you have it. A quick episode out there for everyone out there in the world, 70 million strong of Irish heritage who might be interested in researching your roots and seeing if you qualify to become and apply for an Irish citizenship. Thanks so much for listening to the Midlife Traveler podcast. We really appreciate all of our listeners and safe travels wherever you may roam. 